Hi, I'm Tom Hackett, and today we're going to cover the simplest neural network explanation ever. Well, if you're familiar with this Albert Einstein quote, he once said that everything should be explained as simply as possible, but no simpler. Well, I'm afraid I might violate that rule because I'm really going to oversimplify this whole neural network thing. But this approach that I took here really helped me to get kind of an intuitive feeling for neural networks, and I'm hoping that it can help you also. So let's get started. Well, we're going to take a look at this, this chart here, and as you can see, it's quite an eye chart. And in fact, this is a printout from an Excel spreadsheet that I put together that is a kind of a neural network-like calculator. And in fact, uh, this is linked in the description so you can download it and play with this calculator yourself. But I'm going to use this as a vehicle to kind of explain the neural network process. So let's get started. What this neural network calculator is going to do is try to recognize if this, these green lines here represent the letter X or not. So it's a calculator specifically for that. Is this an, a letter X or not? In order for the calculator to work on it, I've assigned the number 1 to all the green squares, and all the background squares, the red ones here, have the number minus 1. So this array of 1s and minus run ones then becomes the image function. That's what we'll call this, the image function. Now, when you look at it, we're going to want to identify pieces of the image function. And we're going to do that with filters. So over here, I have a little filter, which is a diagonal line that way. And that would line up with this part of the, uh, of the image function. And there's an opposite diagonal down here. So that would line up with this part of the uh, main image function. And then there's a little x in the middle, which would correspond to the middle of the main image function. OK, so how do we get these things to sort of like recognize each other? Well, we're going to use a mathematical operation called convolution. And convolution is where you take one function, slide it across another function, and multiply as you go. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the first filter function and imagine that it's laid on top of this upper left part of the image function. So imagine that we had this, shift it over, and align right on top. And so the squares that are on top of each other, we're going to multiply those together. So this green one would overlay that green one, so we multiply those together. 1 times 1 equals 1, and we'll store the answer over here. And then we'll do the same thing with the next number. A minus 1 times a minus 1, well, that also equals positive 1, and so we store that here. And then, etc. we're going to multiply this number times that one, store it here, and so forth for the rest of that square. Now, after that, we're going to shift the filter function over three squares to where it's now overlaying just the middle top middle part of the image function and do that same multiplication. And we'll store the numbers here. And then we'll shift it three more spaces over and multiply and get that last set of numbers. And then do the rest for the rest of that image. Also, we're going to then do the same thing with this filter function and that one. And we end up with these three arrays of numbers. And this is now our convolution layer, the sort of the results of our convolution. Now, in real-world neural networks, they won't skip over three spaces. They'll go like one pixel at a time. And doing that uh, gives you more accuracy, but at the expense of a lot more data to deal with. And they'll call that shifting of one pixel, they'll call that a stride of one. And here I took a stride of three, and I ended up with probably less accuracy, as we'll see, but, but a lot less data, and that was good enough for this kind of application. So, OK, that gives us this array of 1s and minus 1s. Now, eventually, we're going to get to a point where each of the values in these squares, each group, is going to vote to decide whether or not this image was an x or not. And that voting means we've got to get those numbers down into a, a single number, which represents a probability, so like a number between 0 and 1. And so these minus 1s are not going to help us in that process. We need to get rid of the minus 1s. And uh, real-world neural networks do the same thing. And they do it in what's called a normalization layer, where everything that's negative, we're just going to set it to 0. And that's done uh, using an operation called a rectified linear unit, or a ReLU. 
and it does exactly what I said. It simply takes everything that's negative, makes it zero. Everything that's positive, it leaves it as it is. So that gives us this array of values. So we had our convolution layer, and then our second layer here was a normalization layer. Now we've got two more layers to go before we get our answer as to whether this image is an X or not. But we'll cover that in next week's video. So for today, I'm Tom Hackett for Whiteboard Wednesday.